So my name is Yusuf Baitora, also known as Pro VT. Started a very successful person training company, training your high-end celebrities. You got your CEOs, becoming a influencer boxer, and then starting my own perfume company. Because I was consistent, I was hardworking, and I was doing it for free. You can't compete with me. I feel like I'm a great businessman. That's what it is, and I'm good with people. Mm -hmm. I'm good at connecting the dots. I used to get in trouble a lot, and I actually ended up in prison at the age of 15. And again, going back into prison was a massive change in my life because it helped me a lot it made me realize and unlock certain strengths in myself that i never knew i had when i first started pt and i was actually homeless i gave up my background my business my family because i wanted to get away because yeah i came out of prison i'm gonna turn my life around but my past was catching up with me so even till the age of 18 i got stabbed twice i was still living in my mom's estate i was going through a breakup and all of that but when i was in prison i had a great time Really? Yeah. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A Millennial Mind. If you haven't already, please, 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 can you do me a massive favor and press the subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening or watching to this. Only 4% of you that watch and listen to this podcast are actually following it. And the bigger the show gets, the bigger the guests get, and the bigger the experience gets too. Thank you so much for all of your support so far. Let's get into the episode. Yusuf. <laughs> Welcome back to a millennial mind. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for having me again. No, you're my third guest and I'll, I'll always remember you because obviously when I started, I was really scared. Yeah. And I remember turning up to your house and at this time you were the celebrity PT and I thought it was like a really big guest on my podcast. You still are, by the way. Yeah, but at I the time I remember thinking, oh my God, so great. And I remember turning up and you being like, I didn't know I was on your podcast. <laughs> Am I? Uh, am I coming on your podcast? Did, in that moment, I was like, oh no, he's not going to do it. How did we get about, because remember, I never used to manage my social or, or like my yeah. meetings or anything. How did we get about? Well, that? Alessia told me to come over okay. and record with you. So were you originally following her or were you following me? I was following you. Wow. But I messaged your account and you yeah. were like, on your account, you were like, yeah, come over. Then I get there yeah, and yeah. Alessia was like, we'll do it together. So we did a podcast with both of you. Yeah. And I'll never forget, I bought this like wireless camera, do you remember? <laughs> and I didn't know what I was doing with it because I'd borrowed it off a friend. Literally. And you were helping me put it together. Then we recorded and you helped me put it back. And I remember you being so kind. And I was very scared of you, by the way, because right. I was six foot two. <laughs> so bulky. Like, yeah. opened the door and was like, I'm not doing a podcast. I was like, oh my God. So, so I wasn't scared. that bad. <laughs> I was just scared. And I think I was, I was at the start of my journey. So I didn't really know what I was doing, and yeah. this is where I always talk about, and you know, in the beginning, I was so rough around the edges. I still probably am now when yeah, I compare yeah, yeah. myself to probably what I'll be in five years time. But I feel like that's maybe one of the most natural things that we have right now in common is the fact that we've done it. Mm -hmm. And we've done it at the foundation at the start. Mm -hmm. I've watched you grow, you've seen me grow. Mm -hmm. At the start, again, it was something that I, I wasn't aware of it. And then you turned up and all of a sudden, we actually filmed one of my best podcasts. And I still use certain clips from that podcast in my recent videos, because yeah. I've done loads of podcasts. I've been on like the TV for it. I've done like BBC. I've done like big, big platforms. But now I've come to realise from that podcast there, the mm -hmm. things that we expressed and the things that we spoke about, because again, it was during lockdown. Yeah. It still relates home to me right now. It does. Yeah. And I think, you know, the conversation did flow really naturally. Yeah. So I'm very excited good. to have you back. I'm excited for you having me again. So for people who don't know who you are, tell me. Who are you? The man behind the balaclava. <laughs> the man behind the balaclava. So my name is Yusa Batora, um, also known as Pro VT. People knew me from being someone who started a very successful person training company, um, training your high-end celebrities, your A-list celebrities. You got your CEOs. To then eventually put myself out there, becoming a influencer boxer, and then starting my own perfume company. And now I've got my hands in different avenues. And so, you're 26. I'm 26, yeah. <laughs> It's funny because obviously I know your story, but I think the thing that stands out to people a lot is, you know, your journey and how you started and to where you are now. I want to talk a little bit about your childhood because we okay. spoke about that a lot in the last podcast. And I think it's important to touch on that because a lot of people probably don't know that you went to prison. So let's talk around growing up in Tottenham. Okay. And then how eventually you got into prison. So I grew up in Tottenham um, with my siblings. Mm -hmm. I had a mom and dad at the time. And we grew up very rough in a very sort of, I say, low class end. Mm -hmm. um, finance was always a problem. <clears throat> and I think with that said, I struggled in school. I yeah. struggled with being told what to do. And I always had this sort of drive and the creative mind. And 
I just knew how to connect as puzzles. I was really good with people when it came to doing something I was passionate about or something I enjoyed or something I wanted to do. So from a very young age, I took advantage over that, got myself involved in the wrong things because that's what I was surrounded by, of course. <clears throat> and I felt like because things were quite tough at home and home wasn't really home for me and it was a very small house with a lot of us in it, mm -hmm. I always wanted to go out there and feel like I had to prove a point. Mm -hmm. So I became good at anything I got my hands on. So whether it was positive or negative, yeah. I wanted to become their best. And I still live with that extreme mentality now. You know, I believe I'm an extremist. Anything I want to do, I want to do at the best level. Or anything I get myself in involved in. If I'm not doing 100%, I'm not doing it. So <clears throat> I realised from early, I was really good at everything I put my mindset to. And anything I didn't want to do, I'd be the complete opposite. And um, I used to get in trouble a lot. So from getting in trouble in school to then feeling the need to be outside and rebel against that and rebel against what I felt was not normal to the rest of the people because everyone else was doing one thing I wanted to do the complete opposite and be judged on it I feel like fuck it I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna do it properly and do the way I wanted to do it so then I got in trouble and I actually ended up in prison at the age of 15 <clears throat> and again going back into prison was a massive change in my life because it helped me a lot first of all discovering myself and the time I spent in the cell and the time I spent locked away made me realise and unlock certain strengths in myself that I never knew I had. So why did you go to prison? So I went to prison for basically being involved in a lot of crime. Um, I was heavily involved in a lot of gang acts where a lot of my co defendant got found guilty for it and I was proven not guilty, I got let out and I was actually given an opportunity by the judge to turn my life around and make a promise to myself and God and to the judge and the people that I'll never go back to what I was involved in. So what I believe I was heavily influenced and involved in, mm -hmm. because I had that mentality and that mindset to be the best at everything I was doing. So I thought when I was involved in crime, I had to be mm. heavily involved in it and heavily, you know what I mean, invested in it, that I became good at what I was doing, but it was the wrong path. Mm. So I used them same skill sets and that same mindset to now implement it into something positive. And that's the reason why the transition was easy. Because like I said to you, I'm an extremist. So when I want to do something positive, I'll do it to an extreme level. If I was doing something negative at the time or something wrong, and I never had the right guidance and, you know, the right people around me, that's all I knew and that's all I focused on. So I took that chance and here I am now. It's interesting that you said you were kind of an extremist because I get that. But what then made you go into prison and think, I'm not going to become the best prison gang member or I'm not going to become, you know, the owner of this prison. What made you know you what? When I was in prison, I had a great time. Really? Yeah. Wow. And it was it was a very easy transition and I, I adapted really well. <clears throat> I made really good friends. I learned how to survive. Um, again, I used my time in there to develop skill sets that I still use now. Like? It allowed me to discipline, okay. structure, training, um, I learned a lot about my faith, which I still follow up to now. Mm -hmm. um, prayers. So, like, there was a lot of things there. And also just myself, like, my mental, like, it helped me really think and, and, and deepen my thoughts and made me realise who I am. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it gave me a lot of confidence. And I carry that confidence even now through harsh and through a place where I was so isolated and my freedom was taken away from me. And I was abused in prison by governors in the aspect where I went to jail when I was 15. So you can imagine, mm -hmm. I spoke about this on a podcast a couple of weeks ago where like governors will ask you to strip, bend over, spread your cheeks and cough. And there'll be an old man with a torch mm. making you feel vulnerable. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like things like that, which you can't, eliminate and you only realise when you get older right I used to get abused yeah cause that's that's mad of if you deep it that's mad at the age of 15 to expose yourself like that you know and then after on top of that they're making jokes about you whilst you're there and you can't say nothing okay. cause you're about to get locked up in a, in a cell and your, your freedom's taken away from you in a cell for 23 hours and a half what do you do then yeah 23 and a half 20 23 hours and a half especially at the start unless you, like you're well behaved and you know what I mean? Like, but like with me, I think when I went in there, I went in there with the wrong mentality and the wrong mindset. I wanted to be the cool kid. So, right. So what made you change then? Because it sounds like you went in with this attitude of I'm going to, you know, whatever, I'm going to be the best or I'm going to be the cool kid. And then you came out of it like a completely transformed person. My confident, without you know. I think my confidence made me realise it's not even that bad in there. It's bad, 
but it's what you make it. And I, I truly believe God gave me a second chance and that judge really helped me wow. because he said to me, I remember I went to court for seven days, so five days, Monday to Friday, every single day and trying to get myself back out to recreate something. And it was the conversations I had with God and what I was implementing in court. I pretty much manipulated the judge to give me a second chance. When and you he say gave manipulate, me, what do you mean? Just certain conversation, I believe, like, out of all my cold defenders, <clears throat> I don't know, I just knew that this wasn't me anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. And I truly had that confidence that I will make a change. And this was the things that I was saying to him. I was so confident that I'm ready now. Yeah, so you believed it. You weren't yeah. manipulating him, like lying to him. You actually nah, believed not it within yourself. In the sense where, like, I would, my confidence and my belief and everything made him be like, there you got to go. There's a lot of people that go to prison that are, you know... And when I mean manipulated, going back on that, yeah. manipulate, sometimes people look at it from a negative perspective, yes. but there's also a positive perspective. Someone who's confident is a form of manipulation as well. Someone who's well-spoken. Mm-hmm. Someone who's very direct. Do you know what That's I mean? That's true. And um, I think smart, wise people love that. Especially mm-hmm. myself. I want to speak to someone who's confident, who's manipulative, who's very direct. Who, If they want something, this is what they want, they're mm-hmm. going to get. So I know what to expect and I know what to deliver towards that person. I like that. That's a good way to look at it and reframe it. So there are a lot of people that grow up in gangs or bad neighbourhoods and and they they end up in prison. Yeah. Do you think at the moment in prison there is that kind of rehabilitation, reform system there? Nothing. No? Nothing nothing at all. Um, It's down to each individual. Most of the people I know I was in prison with are back there now or are still doing what they were doing. I I don't think there's many people who change. The people who I meet now who have changed or who achieved something are people from random areas or people who have done something and utilised social media and have seen that success or seen that growth or heard their stories or relate to them by listening to a podcast. But not many people make it out. And this is the reason why now I'm involved with this, which I explained to you earlier, which, which was becoming the face of the education in prison now. Talk to me a bit more about that. So one of my good clients... Um, he now works just underneath the global system. I think what's it called Global Universal System. I think it's called. Mm-hmm. It's a massive university company, and they own most of the education. So they own a lot of colleges, they own universities, and now they just bought the education system in prison. Wow. And they want me to be the face of it because of my story, because of my journey, because of what I was able to accomplish, and because again, I'm still young, 26. I'm very relatable mm. to these people. And you can show them that there's a way out. And not only that, I've, I've approached it from an aspect without any qualification, without any degrees, without any form of education, but using strategies and using social media and using the network and the people and myself as a character to accomplish something, to show people that you can do more than think, oh, your criminal record or, you know what I mean, you need a certain degree to accomplish something. I think a lot of people say that once you've gone to prison, you know, it's very hard to move on. No, let's just take the worst thing possible someone could have done. It's very difficult to forgive that person because how could they have done it in the first place? But at the end of the day, what is that person meant to do at that point? If if they've done something really terrible and they regret it and they've gone to prison, let's say for however many years, and then they've come out, I really believe that people should have the chance to have a second chance. Because what do you want people to do? Because if we're in a society where we don't forgive people and we don't believe anyone can change, then all we're doing is telling them to continue with their criminal acts. 100%. So I'll ask you a question. Have you ever committed a crime? Mm, Not legal, not not proper one. Or done a mistake? Yeah, of course. I made several mistakes. A mistake that you think if it was someone else, they could have got in trouble for it? Um, no. Go back on your years, accidentally, even for something not intentionally. Maybe, I don't I know. I believe everyone's committed some sort of crime. I definitely walked out of Woolworths with, with um, a pack of pencils and then I didn't go and give them back. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like six, but I was like, I remember walking out with like these pack of pencils. And then when we got outside, I was like to my mum, oh my God. And she yeah. was like, go and give them back. And I was like, it's too embarrassing. And she was like, go <laughs> yeah, and give yeah, them yeah, back. Yeah. And then I did it and I felt so embarrassed. Yeah. But I've stolen pick and mix sweets. I there used to do go. it when I was a kid. So I believe everyone commits a mistake. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you got to judge them upon that. No matter mm-hmm. when they've done it in their life. Mm-hmm. I know some people don't commit any crime and then do a mistake in their older age. But the consequence of sadly is when you get older, mm-hmm. you're treated different to 
someone who's younger. You are. But I still believe people deserve a second chance. I do. Because you don't know where they are in life. And sometimes people are not aware of it. And some people are affected by, like I said, some people can be even intoxicated and commit a crime. Not intentionally. Some people can be in a bad mental state and commit a crime mm-hmm. unintentionally. And, and some people often don't have choices yeah. in terms of when they're younger who they're influenced by, what they're influenced by, and what the drive is. I, I do truly believe that. And I think that it's very easy to judge and say, yeah, but you should know what's from right and wrong. But when you're younger, you don't. The envir- Your environment really impacts you. And that's why I always say it's so important to have good people around you, a good system around you, feed your mind with positive things, because it's so easily, it's so easy to change. Of course, 100%. So you- I think choice, change will come within yourself. You have to just make that choice. Yeah. And you have to make that promise and that you need to make that agreement with yourself. For me, it was easy because I had faith in God. And I, I feel like if you can make a promise and faith in God, it's easy for you to make faith. Uh, so, sorry, to make a, a promise to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, because then you're no longer just accountable for yourself, but you're accountable for the higher power. Were you so, Christian growing up? No. You weren't? No, I was Muslim, yeah. Oh, you were Muslim growing but up? But I wasn't okay. practicing until I went in prison. Oh. Because when I felt empty and lonely and lost, I try to turn towards something and I, I just wanted to feel safe. I wanted to feel at peace and I wanted to feel and bring back that confidence that I had mm. and praying helped me find out. That's so nice. Yeah. So you went to prison when you were 15. When did you get out? Well, before I was 16. Before you were 16. Yeah. So tell me, what happened then? What happened then? Um, <clears throat> I still had a lot of conditions that I was under, so mm-hmm. like tag, home arrest and all of that. Okay. But I started training and I helped myself lose weight on my own when I was in prison, which helped me inspire a lot of people. Okay. Um, back then it was BBM, was a platform that we used mm-hmm. to promote ourselves and I had a massive following starting off from there, so I was really? able to inspire a lot of people, yeah. Then I had about a few thousand BBM subscribers or ads, whatever they're called. I didn't even know you could do that on BBM. Yeah, like friends, like ads. I had thousands. Oh, I see. I thought I was yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. BBM Blackberry Messenger. Blackberry Messenger, yeah. 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 Could you? I can't remember. I thought it was only on your phone. Yeah, on your phone. But it was like broadcast. People broadcast so you can grow a big page. And oh, yeah, you're fine. Yeah. You could broadcast. Yeah, you can broadcast. So okay. I had a big, I had groups. I had like females, males, money. Like I had like whatever I was doing back then. I had like right. groups for each each individual thing that I was doing. And I was making money from my BBM. But then when I came out, I used that same BBM to promote my fitness journey. Okay. And then you want And it was my weight loss. And it was Facebook at the time. Okay. So I used to post my before and afters and I thought, you know what, I can give people free tips and advice. Mm. And they built my confidence in that element of now I'm going to come with PT. And then I did my course, I was qualified. By the mm-hmm. time I was 18, I was fully qualified. Okay. And I was like, where do I start? Started trying to plant my seeds, offered free PT sessions, gave up what I was doing at the time, which was the rickshaw bikes in central London. You know them three wheel bikes? Yeah. So I ran that as a business with my family. Um, on my family, me and my two brothers, we were literally hiring them out and going around and learning skill sets that now has helped me with everything I'm doing now. Wow. Like sales, like providing a service, customer service, mm-hmm. paying rent, trying to make money back, like pay storage and all these things that back then... I didn't know what I was doing, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a go. And we became really good at it. We became really popular. And then gave that up to follow my dream, which was to become a personal trainer. And then when I became a personal trainer, I implemented the same strategies, provide a good service, plant your mm-hmm. seeds, you know, like pay your rent, do this. So how did you go from being a PT to then getting all of these celebrity clients? Like you've had Molly <clears throat> May, you've had Demi Rose, you have... It was the same formula. The formula that got me really viral and got me the client I was working was I gave to them a service, I offered them something for free. Mm-hmm. I created something for them so they can either post on myself or for them. And I made sure that they got the results so they can refer me. And then again, it became a snowball effect after that. So when I first started PT and I was actually homeless, I gave up my background, my business, my family, because I wanted to get away. Because yeah, I came out of prison, I'm going to turn my life around. But my past was catching up with me. So even until the age of 18, I got stabbed twice. <gasps> I was still living in my mum's estate and um, I was going through a breakup and all of that. But that gave me drive to just let go. And I thought, if I can spend time in prison and live in a prison cell, 
what stops me from living in the gym where I'm in an environment where I want to be in, where I had a dream and a passion to grow and achieve something that if I can sleep in a prison cell, why can I not sleep in a disabled toilet and sacrifice this six months now to have a vision that in one year's time, what I'm giving back and what I'm doing, I can develop something and build a demand for myself. Like I did when I was in the streets, when I used to supply something to someone, I used to give them something for free knowing that they might call me back if I left my number there. Same thing in the gym, I was giving them free services knowing that if I gave them something, they can one day bring it back to me. And then after a year, my demand became so high and I literally had my phone, my email, everyone was like, I want ProPT, I wanted to train with me. And I grew my hair. I wanted to stand out. I wanted to be different to everyone else. And I was like, rare, who's this guy? He's nuts. <laughs> he trains like a madman. He's got long hair. Like, who is he? He's got so much energy. He's giving away free classes and he's pre team for free. Like, we want to train with him. And I was like, cool, I've got all this demand right now. I can implement it into my PT business, made a lot of money. And then did that same thing with the celebrities. Reach out, reach out, reach out. When they came in, offered them free training session, gave them content gave them the results, they're telling their friends, by the time I built enough demand for myself, everyone wanted to trade with me. Mm. So it became an easy formula. And I implemented that with everything. Who was your first celebrity client? Um, first celebrity? I, I'll say like, I worked with micro influencers who were managed by man good management who had celebrities underneath them. Got it. And it was because the manager saw me train these micro influencers. They're like, well, we've got this client that wants to work with you now. Oh, wow. But at this time, they were paying for it because they're like, I was busy enough. I had enough yeah. content and I had so much value and I had enough of a demand for myself. And it wasn't just the celebrities because celebrities like great for exposure. But when you got the owner of like Next, your client, your owner of Lipsy, mm -hmm. like you're working with Selfridges, you're working with these companies and these brands. Again, no one knew my history, my past at the time. Oh, they didn't? No. no one knew. And on social media, you wouldn't even know what I looked like because I never posted myself. It was literally the people that were working for us, my brother and the clients. Were you scared to say that? No, I wasn't scared. Why? Um, my my really loyal close clients would have known of it. Mm -hmm. And um, they were like my mentors at the time. <clears throat> so I feel like for them, they encouraged me to speak about it. Like, that's your story. Mm. Speak about it, that's going to get you places. And I did do that. But then the reason why I didn't want to do that at the time because I just wanted to focus on people. For me, it was like I was getting a strive and a, th a thrill from helping others. It was never about it was never about me. And then I realized people now want me, and I was like, how can I take advantage over that now? How can I use that as a business and make money from it and monetize it? So I was like, well, my followers are, are getting caps right now. It's repetitive. It's boring. <laughs> put the man behind Pro PT out there. Mm -hmm. Put myself out there and showcase what I was doing before I even put myself out there was, was my extreme runs, my mm -hmm. crazy, you know what I mean? I ran from Brighton to London, I ran from Cambridge to London, all these crazy things, yeah, which people before social media never knew I was capable of doing these things, you know? So do you do, things, do, you do these things for likes? No, nah, I do it because I have it in me and I want to market myself. Mm -hmm. So I implement what I'm, what I'm uncomfortable in doing yeah. with what I'm good at doing with trying to market myself to be like again like the extremist myself being the best and being everything I know I can, I can do just doing it at a level where people just have to make a comment and, and judge me for it and I guess you were doing it before it's just you didn't advertise on didn't social advertise media it, yeah. I remember coming to train with you in your studio yeah. <laughs> and your energy is is crazy it's you mad. do feel very pumped up yeah. right and i do remember having a lot of endorphins after our session and i also remember in lockdown you were doing a lot of free sessions in the park yeah. so one of the things you've been doing from the beginning is giving back to the community from the start from the age of 15 so way before in prison what and i carried that charity charity yeah way before 15 like it was I've, charities in our faith it's one of our five pillars so i carry that in me when I came out and the just said to me, give something back to the community, it was clean the parks, doing like, um, it was called kicks at the time, like five side power league, but it was for the young generation, for schools and stuff, getting the community together and coaching them football, even though I wasn't good at football, but that's where I learned my skills that then I used those football coaching skills to teach my classes. And when I first started teaching my classes, I failed because I was trying to teach football skills, <laughs> like boot camp training for football players, to like elderly people and like young girls in the gym and it didn't work. So I thought, yeah. well, this is a fail. But I never gave up. And I practiced and practiced and I was like, cool, how do I grow these numbers in classes 
So I started watching what the big people were doing. The people who are smashing it and have a big audience, have a big following. And I'm like, what, well, they're using this kind of music. My music generally doesn't work. Let me adapt that. Oh, now they're doing these sort of exercises. Well, this strategy didn't work. Let me try this. Then I, once I built that platform and I copied everyone else, I twisted it mm. and then had my own thing going for myself. And because I was consistent, I was hard working and I was doing it for free, you can't compete with me. And again, my colours, coordination, the colours I, I was wearing, my hair, my energy, and the fact that people will see all these celebrity clients, they will see all these, like, all these clients and all these audience and thousands of people coming to the park, but who's the man behind it? Mm. People will come to me and be like, is that you? They're expecting, like, I don't know who they're expecting, but people first impression like, what? Because mm -hmm. you never sold me. And then instantly they fell in love with me because my energy is crazy. And then from that, we carried a community. Mm -hmm. And then lockdown came in and it was like unexpected. And, it was, um, yeah. and like I worked around it you and did. I worked around it really hard and I tried, but then I came to realize like, all right, I got all of this, but why am I trading my time for money? And that's where I, the idea of creating a fragrance company, creating a product that I was passionate about and I believed in. And I always liked smelling nice. And one thing people liked about me was like, the way I live, the way I carry myself. And I'm a clean person. <clears throat> I like smelling nice. You came to my house. You know, mm -hmm. you know what my house is like. Mm -hmm. you know, every, I'm very OCD. Yeah. So everyone used to always come to me about my smell. So I thought, you know what? Let's come up with a product. Let's try this. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And now we're here and we're smashing it. So talk to me about that transition. Because obviously you were known for being a PT. It was your passion. It was something you yeah. enjoyed. It was something that got you out of prison. All of that mentality and discipline. Why the sudden pivot? Forgot to mention, I feel like I'm a great businessman. That's what it is. And I'm good with people. Mm -hmm. I'm good at connecting the dots. So you all were. along, yeah, I became successful. But I think because of... I am a businessman, that's what it is. That's the that's the core behind it all. So I feel like anything I'll do right now will be good at. Because it's the same. It's a formula. I feel like business is a formula. If you got if you can put the equations together, you can do great at anything. As long as you love it and you're willing to work hard for it and you're willing to create value, which puts you in an advantage with your competitors, helps you save money on marketing because you're able to give something mm -hmm. and you're able to build that trust and that real relationship with people, then you can smash it anything. So and don't chase money. Chase the numbers. Which numbers? For likes, follows. Really? Views. 100%. No way. All right, if you want to start, start up a company and you never had an audience, what are you paying for? Mm -hmm. To get your brand out. You're paying for marketing. What about your purpose? In what sense? So your you purpose is what you believe in, isn't it? Correct. So isn't that the most important thing? That's the foundation. But once you discover what your purpose is or the product you want to sell or the service you want to offer, how are you going to get it out there? You need numbers. And how do you build, how do you build those numbers? Because aren't you I just chasing a vanity metric? I feel right now it's easy because we've got social media. You can post something viral and then that's it. And to keep practicing, mm -hmm. keep an eye out what's doing really well, copy, twist mm -hmm. it, keep posting, be consistent. Like, don't be disappointed when the numbers are not there. And don't be disappointed when you're not getting what you expected to get. Just keep trying and keep going. And all of a sudden it makes sense. It'll, it'll just make sense. And then like what you're, there's a, there's a message behind what you're really trying to do. You know, like we're in a bally. There's a reason why I'm wearing a bally. Mm -hmm. This content's going to go viral. And everyone's going to question it. Like, why is he wearing a mask? Take it off. It's embarrassing. What is he trying to do? We know what you look like. Well, if I just stood here and I spoke, the chances of you just flicking through, but like, oh yeah, probably another one, one of our ordinary podcasts. If I'm interested, I'm interested. If I'm not interested, if I'm subscribed, I'll follow through. If I'm not subscribed, <laughs> yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, we hear, oh, she's repetitive. Well, now, oh, who's this guy? Mm. Why is he coming to Bali? Oh, let's click on this. Oh, okay, makes sense. Let's see his highlights. What does he, oh, Celebrity PT. Oh, what, your Torah? Huh? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? So, mm -hmm. So everything's very strategic with you. Very strategic. You and I play strategic what? games. Okay, tell me some of them. The best game I play is Connect Four. If you got time, at the end... I'll smash you in Connect Four. <laughs> I'm great at Connect Four. No one ever beats me. Put on you. Then you know what? Yeah, then you believe in everything I spoke about right now. If you really are good at Connect I'm Four... I'm really good at Connect Four. Do you relate to what I've said? Where do you start? What's the first position you put it in? In the middle. So do I. Then? Keep going in the middle. I'll go at the end. Why? Because when I put it at the end, 
yeah? So I put it in the middle, I put it at the end, the next person will put it here and I'll put it here. It's very easy to win, I'll show you. All right. Got I'll it? Put, yeah. <laughs> what, quickly? No, yeah. not now. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> not on camera, no, like, I'm joking. My whole train journey here was on Connect 4. Okay, tell me the meaning behind that. It's just, a, it teaches you how to take steps ahead. Like it makes, it teaches you how to plant your seed and you're dealing with competition and life you're dealing with competition obstacles so the opposite opponent is your competitor the opposite opponent is like every time they drop something is your obstacle and you have to try and win the the, and the aim of the game is to win and I believe in always winning I know anything I do I know because I, I, I only do it because I know I'm going to win and to win you've got to be strategic but to back it you mm. need to have be consistent you need to work hard you need to have the confidence that comes with it the energy, the strive, and you just have that winner's mentality, like the obsession. Do you think you're born with confidence? Mm, no. Nah. Yeah. I was very insecure. I was a fat kid. I used to rebel myself. I used to tell myself, maybe being fat, like I'm just going to accept it and I'm going to be confident. And I just pretended to be confident. I used to pretend to be the funny person. Yeah, it got me to a certain level, but when you're battling your health, are you really confident? When like being uncomfortable in yourself takes over you are you really confident what because everyone likes you but how about inside do you like yourself <clears throat> you know and that's that's one of the things and that's why I think I, I wanted to really encourage people as, as much as people follow the trends right now and say love who you are and what you look like and everything yeah there's a certain element of that but how do you feel inside like don't become acceptance when you know it can affect your health because it's not good you know if you're really trying and you're exercising and, you know, you're trying to make a change, you're trying to stay fit and healthy, which is the most important thing, I think, in life, because it's the mm -hmm. only thing, it's the only selfish act, I believe, we should work on. It's working on ourselves, physically and mentally. Apart from that, you should be a selfless person. You should be a person for others. You should give, give, get. And I can talk about it my whole life. Like, my biggest life insurance is the people I impact and the people I help. I take everything away from me. Take my success, take my finance, take my mindset one thing you can never take away is the people that i impact on a daily pace the people that i've helped the people that i want to help and what i truly live for which is creating value that you can never take that away from me and that for me is my life insurance the more people i can have the more confident i become, I become the more wiser the more opportunities and like everywhere i go like i'm just respected because of that because of that I always say that competence equals confidence and the more and more you do something the more and more confident you'll be yeah, at the beginning I don't think any I don't believe anyone's born confident no. I think some people are naturally more people people or you know some people enjoy public speaking like you and I probably yeah. do and there are some people who are a little bit more introverted but that doesn't mean you're not confident I agree and so okay so talk to me about your boxing journey so what a boxing journey I was going through a breakup <clears throat> and um, in the meantime, I'm trying to build your Torah and it was affecting me because it was like the first three months of really like building a company mm -hmm. from scratch and I let go of Pro BT to just yeah. focus on the fragrance and I still had a gym in my house and I still had the demand and the client but I was like, nah, like I need to go back and I miss the struggle. Like I became so big in person training and I was like to myself, if I won't have kids one day, yeah, I don't want to be like my dad is a PT. I wanted to be my dad's a boss man. He owns this, he owns this, he owns that. But I was so sucked and so credited and so valued. And everyone looked at me like, oh, you've achieved it, you've come so far, you live in a mansion, you do this, you do that. And I'm like, but deep inside, I'm like, I feel empty, I feel lost. I I feel like I haven't accomplished anything. I'm tired of being known for that. I was like, I want to go back to square one. I'm going back to the groundwork where I first started and replicate that same formula. Mm -hmm. And I did that with a fragrance. Me and my brother got a table, <clears throat> went to every single station, gave away freebies, s tried to sell oud, started for the oils, went into bottles, and then within three months, smashed it. Got a marketplace, absolutely annihilated the place, made a lot of money, reinvested it. That's one thing about me, I, I don't like money, I like reinvesting money. So when money comes quick, I don't like holding on to it, I don't like feeling I've got money, I like to just pump it straight back into it and I believe that's the best way to grow and don't chase money, chase the numbers again and then once you have that formula in place, your confidence goes up and like once we accomplish that, 
and I was going through the breakup, I was like, I need something mentally. Like, fitness is always my key point and my key, the first thing I turn to after my prayers. Like, my prayers are regimented every single day, five times a day, but my physical well-being, my mindset and the creative side, I have mm -hmm. two training sessions. I've got my cardio, where it helps me create my marketing strategies and my imagination and stuff, but my physical training, which is my strength or my, like, weight training session, will be like, uh, this is like, if you're pushing 100 kg and you can't go more than 100 kg for one more rep, that's to teach you, like, in business, you're here now, cool, you might need a rest or, like, you can push a set limit. you got to stop and you got to wait till tomorrow to come back to it. It doesn't mean you're fading. It doesn't mean you lost. And, like, if you keep going next week, you're going to push 110. Mm -hmm. So if you keep pushing your business and you feel like you're hitting a wall, sometimes it's not you're hitting a wall. You don't give up. Just... It takes time, patient. So that's what my strength training teaches me and how I implement into my business. And then I combine the two together. And then everything I do outside of training becomes easy. A lot of ideas are saturated now. And the fragrance industry, a lot of people would say saturated. So tell me how you kind of broke into that. How I broke into it. We came up with our unique smells and I've given you the little packages mm -hmm. so you can smell Very them. Very excited. And... Um, from that, I realised there's also a big demand. Everyone likes smelling nice. The commercial and the bigger companies out there are overpricing themselves because they can, because they've done really well. And big up to them, they're a big inspiration for us. But there's also a massive culture, a massive like people out there who can't afford it and still want to smell nice. So mm -hmm. we we were able to recreate designer fragrances without designer price. So that's our first selling pitch. Now that we've established that we're going to keep that for that audience, now we've now we're focusing on creating our own collection, more premium. Mm -hmm. So having that high end audience, but also supporting the majority, which we believe like that's where we come from, and we believe that it's fair that everyone should feel accepted, mm -hmm. and everyone can be a part of this journey with us. And then <clears throat> using this brand now to go into other ventures was keeping the name the same. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why what, your Torah? Why your Torah? So, why is Yusuf? Mm -hmm. A is my mom, dad, initials in gold, and then my son is Boa Torah. So, Torah is their second half of my surname, and I just wanted to have a brand that was was a bit more personal. Like PT was because I created a name within the PT industry mm -hmm. that was different, and now I, I wanted to be professional. I wanted to take it serious, but not be professional at the same time. Yeah. So that's where PT comes from. And I feel like I am pro PT, like we're going like pro PT, pro PT, rather than Yusuf. <laughs> so then your tour is like, I don't even want to be the face of it again. Okay. I don't want to put my face out there. I want to build a brand and a company for my family. Now it's me and my brother on board. We've got a team of six of us now and we're going to grow massively. Like we sat down yesterday with some crazy people and we're about to take this company to the next level. And that's our goal this year. And going back to the book that you gave me, mm -hmm. I can't wait to use that because what you have in your book, Mm -hmm. the note that you gave me yep. it's everything we sat down before the we planner, got here and yeah. spoke about so the yeah. planners like you gave me something right now that's so valuable you don't understand Aww, that literally you. we were talking about before we came here and he's like you said why have you not got a whiteboard because we used to have whiteboard in our old house yep. with the whole pro PT stuff mm -hmm. and he's like why haven't you got a whiteboard and I feel like no you're right we're going to get a whiteboard and when I spoke about myself in my head I thought I'm going to start write these notes down mm. short term goals long term goals how to stru structure it how to break it down what to do and your planner literally ticked all the boxes so when you showed me that, I was like that's my <laughs> <laughs> the reason I created that planner is so many people have a goal and they think yeah. I really want to achieve this how are you going to do it and when are you going to do it yeah. and what specifically are you going to do because I can say for example I really want to grow my business in this year by how much yeah. which brands do I want to work with when I'm going to reach out to them how am I going to find their email address what's my message going to say yeah. there's so many components that are involved with a goal and so many of us don't break down those actions and that's why I do these workshops and that's why I created that planner because it, it makes it easy for you right so I think that it's really key to have really clear goals Going back to, in terms of your your main purpose and vision of helping other people, how are you doing that at the moment? In many ways. One one bit will probably be my content. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that I've got 66,000 66, followers and I still engage with all my DMs. I try to respond to everyone. To even accomplish 66,000 followers is mad. Mm -hmm. And to still have that very high engagement and to still get loads of messages. And a lot of them have been there from the start. Yeah. Um, 
I say it probably last year I gained an extra 20,000. So they're new audience and I'm still interacting with them over TikTok. Mm-hmm. I think I've got like 50 million <laughs> views on my hashtags. Wow. And then I've got like 12 accounts, very viral on TikTok. Even going viral on TikTok was a strategy I wanted to imp- implement and I became viral in three months. No one knew me on TikTok. And TikTok was a different audience to Instagram. Why? Such a negative, such a... Oh, it's very, very low. negative. Yeah, yeah, but I love it. I strive with it. And I feel like the majority of the world is negative, so you've got to give them what they want and then manipulate them into something positive. So taking that negative and converting to something positive, they're going to hate. Show them and, and make them um, make them understand that you don't care. You know what I mean? And then they're all of a sudden, they stop when they hate. They stop with the negativity. And then all of a sudden, they follow your journey and then they jump on board and they become a customer. So Have you always been someone who doesn't care about other people's opinions? Yeah, never. Really? Yeah, never. Why? Why do you think that? Um, As a kid, were you I, told we, it wasn't important? I was told that only, only God can judge you. So that always stayed in my head from a young age. And if only God can judge me, how, how he, like, who are you to judge me? So do you ever feel upset? No. I struggle really? to feel upset, yeah. How interesting. I struggle to feel upset. I struggle to feel let down. I struggle to hold things personal. Obviously, I, I might. You have emotions. You're not a robot. Do you have emotion? But I might like, I might show it sometimes to make people feel comfortable. But deep down, I laugh at everything. Really? And that's one thing I used to struggle to sit at interviews or meetings or like with certain people because they'll be telling me something, trying to put me down or trying to make, and I'll laugh. And I know where that comes from. And that comes from my father. <clears throat> my father used to sit me down and he might have told me off. And if I didn't get upset about it, he'd be like, why are you not upset? And when I get upset, he's like, don't get upset. So he used to confuse me. And it was good in one way, but bad in another way because I used to hide emotions and then rebel. But as I got older, I realized you can't always rebel channel that into something but it's not that bad so are you still hiding your emotions no i love it i embrace it i I embrace all my emotion but i know how to deal with it you know and i've got bipolar disorder as well i noticed that from a very young age and i go high and low high and low Mm -hmm. but the best way to manage it is like when you're high get uncomfortable and when you're uncomfortable get even more uncomfortable so you never either you never either so you just Right in it, and always do something that you love. Do three things in the day that you truly love, and they're selfish for yourself. Do three things that are uncomfortable that mm-hmm. you don't want to do, and do three things where you're helping someone. And accordingly to that, I'm always just like flowing, and I'm good. Like I always say, to you, I'm good. My brother told you, I was I was sit down in meetings where we create something so big, or we had such great opportunity, and then someone's just taking it away from us. And my bounce back will be there and then. And they'll be scared of that. They'll be like, how? Like, on one of my fights, I got knocked down in the second round. I got back up and I still fought and won the fight. Like, I'll never give up. And I, and I, love, I love pain. There's a reason why I didn't train and I went to Brighton and I ran to London and I was laughing. Like, I didn't need to do that. And I put myself in an uncomfortable position. I strive off pain. When I exercise, I don't exercise like normal people. I don't even count my reps. <laughs> I push myself. And when I push myself, I'm laughing, I'm confident. And I'm a bit of a, um, I use the word bully. I don't know why, but I'm a bit of like, um, I sound like a bully in, in, in the streets. Because like, I'm going to bully myself. Mm-hmm. Like, so deep into it. And just push, push, push. And I want to make other people feel a little bit uncomfortable to make them elevate themselves. So by me making people feel uncomfortable is to help them grow. A lot of people you know? work in that mindset. You know, I'm someone like that as well. If I'm in the yeah. gym, I can't have someone who's like, okay, do you want to do it? And they'll say no. Yeah. And they'll say, okay, I need someone who's like, do it now. But even not to that extreme, sometimes it can be we work out together or I just sit there and I literally remind you about mm-hmm. certain things you don't want to be reminded about. Mm-hmm. Or like make you understand, I'm like, listen, there's mm-hmm. no fucking choice, but right now this is what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And like just that, because you know I lead by example, yeah. you're gonna elevate. So mm-hmm. that's why I'm a bully. Like in myself, I really put myself through it so I can lead by example. And when you're going through it, you have no choice, but this is what you're doing now. This is why you're here. Or else why are you here? Mm-hmm. Just leave. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. I'll say, don't do it. 
And then that in itself is like, yeah, rah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but people have, you know? but people have to be motivated by that. You have to know what you're motivated by. Some people are motivated by positive affirmation, yeah. and some people are motivated by negative affirmation. In certain elements of my life, yeah. I'm motivated by negative affirmation, which is in the gym. Yeah. I mean, if you say I'm fat, it's not going to motivate me to yeah. the gym. But when I see that I have nice ab lines, I'm like, I want to keep going, yeah. right? So people are motivated by different things. How do you adapt to your clientele? So when it came to clientele, first of all, like I will never train someone that I don't feel comfortable. So I okay. have to be picky with who I surround myself. And I think everyone should be picky. Yeah. You should be picky when it comes to your relationship. Right. Yeah. You should be picky with your companionship. I don't care if you're my brother, but if me if you have certain habits, there's a there's there's a strict limitation between our relationship. Even though you're my brother. Even if you're my dad and you've got certain habits I disagree with, there's I'm going to create restrictions between our relationship, even though you're my dad. If you're my missus and there's certain things about you that I dislike, I'll create limitations about how I spend my day, what we do when we're together, what do we actually do when we're together. Mm -hmm. I won't just be free to allow you into my space, into my energy, you know? And that's yeah. the same thing with clientele. And I think it doesn't mean you can't be cool with them, you can't be friends with them, but set your boundaries. Mm -hmm. And then when you set your boundaries, do what's good for you but respect others for what they want to do as well. But you need to have self-worth, don't you? 100%. To do that. 100%. So people listening and watching this are probably thinking, right, well, that's great. You're so confident and you've got a lot of self-worth, yeah. but I don't. So what do I do? Get, get used to being uncomfortable. And when you do that, give value, help others, because there's nothing out there more rewarding and satisfying than when someone comes back to you and says, thank you. It's true. Because that then gives you hope gives you happiness and then instantly your mind your mindset will tick it will just switch back like that's the only thing that'll switch your mindset nothing that you've accomplished you could have won you could have won a won, win a medal or you could have won a won a fight that satisfaction might last a 30 seconds might last a minute might last a month might last a year and then what's next but mm -hmm. that that joy that happiness that feeling will die away but one thing that won't die away is when you help someone no matter when they come back to you to thank you, that joy will always stay the same. That fulfillment, that happiness. And then that in itself will give you confidence. And then that then now gives you in a, puts you in a headspace where if you help that person, why can't you not help yourself? Mm -hmm. And it's not always about helping yourself. First. Sometimes it's about helping others and truly doing it meaningfully where you don't want nothing in return. Mm -hmm. But we're selfish for doing that because it's helping us yeah, and puts us in a good place. And then we can go. And that's the reason it goes back to why I'm so confident because I like to help people. And as long as I help people and I plant my seeds, I walk away not wanting nothing and I laugh about it and I'm happy inside. And then I just, I'm able to do something. And it's important in that way. You figure out your strengths, don't you? Mm -hmm. A lot of us don't know our strengths. And that's why I put it in the planner. What, are you, what did you do well? What did you enjoy? Mm -hmm. A lot of people say to me, well, how am I going to find my strength? And I always say, just write down what you enjoyed about your day mm -hmm. or what went well. Mm -hmm. Because slowly, slowly, you'll start to have a list in your mind of the things that you're good at. And some of those things could be your strengths. And some things you're good at, you may not want to pursue, and that's totally fine. Yeah. But some things you just enjoyed that brought you, brought you a smile to your day they could be your key strengths because mm -hmm. you're going to want to keep doing them. And when you keep doing something, you're going to want to improve. And when you improve, you're going to want to be consistent and persistent. 100%. And I think that's how you get the numbers. That's how you get the end goal there is because consistency and doing something you love is the most important thing. But 100%. not everyone's lucky enough to find that immediately. And I think that's why it's so great that you've tried so many different things yeah. and you're only 26. So you're still probably going to try so many so more many things. things. What's the future for... Pro PT? <clears throat> no, I'm joking. What's no, the no, future no. for you? <laughs> no, literally Pro PT, you're right. And I had this conversation with my brother yesterday. I said, I'm at a stage right now, Pro PT is my baby. It's always been yeah. great. And we've been through a lot through Pro PT. And we're still, like, I just got verified a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. like, that's mad. Mm -hmm. like, that was something I wanted to accomplish about six years ago. I thought I was ready then. But now I've, I've gone through everything I've gone through now. Yeah. It's mad. Like, I went viral like a couple months ago. and I told people a month before that I was going to go viral <laughs> there's a video I said listen you guys have no choice but to watch me mm -hmm. and then a month on that day so from the 12th to the 12th I went viral across the whole globe around the whole world I was on every single front page every newspaper article I was asked to go around the whole world to be interviewed the brand deals that came off it and what people before that you ran in the snow right 
But that's me. I do that regardless. Yeah. <laughs> so me posting that. Yeah. Like on I said, the coldest you, day of the year, you were running, yeah. right? Yeah, on but, the motorway, no. No, or that like was on dual carriageways or something. No, like that, that was outside the time stadium. Oh, okay. So fine. back in my hometown. But if you look, a year before that, I was doing it. Mm-hmm. And the year yeah, before that, been, I was doing it. Doing it There's videos time. there on my Instagram page that you can find from a year before that that I was doing that already. So that part's easy, mm-hmm. you know. But then I did it with a belly. And that was something I was doing it before I ran. <laughs> you know what I mean? There yeah. was, if you go back a couple of posts before that, I was out running in my belly because the whole belly thing as well is there's a massive urban culture out there. And I feel like if I can lead by example, some people are not confident, some people are not afraid to talk. And it's always those people who, are struggling, but their voices and their stories can be so powerful, especially for people like myself and yourself who you like listening, who mm-hmm. can scroll through social media and connect to what people say. Yeah. Because I feel like that's what your whole podcast is about. It's about helping others it and is. being relatable through a visual piece of content, but more of a hearing mm-hmm. rather than a reading form, format. And their voices and their journeys, if they were able to speak about it, we can relate and learn. But let's get to sort of the face. So if I'm encouraging that, you can wear by, you can be vocal and be so successful and achieve all of that. It will encourage all them other individuals, which we can learn so much more from them, that they can be well-spoken, they can speak out. You don't have to show your face to be successful. And that can prove that from ProPT when I first started. No one knew who I was. Mm-hmm. And I became really successful. You did. And now that I'm out there, my face out there, I want to show people that you can cover your face. Like right now, I'm sponsored by King. Mm-hmm. And King's hair on the same belly that people are asking, why are you wearing a belly? Mm-hmm. Now I'm getting paid to wear this. Mm-hmm. But a couple of months ago, why are you wearing a belly? Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's really a crazy story. Yeah. Yeah. The opportunities yeah. are endless. And I think, you know, the biggest takeaway from this is just because you make a mistake doesn't mean you're going to be punished for it for the rest of your life and doesn't mean you should punish yourself for it for the rest of your life. So thank you so much. And a power of value. Mm-hmm. And another thing before we close this, like, what you're doing is amazing. Thank you. And um, <clears throat> not only that, I feel like we're very similar. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're basically doing the formulas that I've spoken about. Mm-hmm. What you're doing is very relatable. And I feel like you can relate. And I feel like you can take a lot from this. And yeah. obviously, like, I want cool. I want the best for you. Thank and you. I mean it from my heart. I and I'm not just saying that because of the camera. Because we can cut this. Bit, I but I mean it. And like, just keep going, man. Have Thanks. fun with it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not about the money. And yeah, like, them piece of equipment there, you'll be sat here next year and you'll be like, fuck, you know, this is sick. <laughs> and smile through it. Have fun. It's true. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's all good. I think it's so important to now enjoy the moment because mm-hmm. generally I'm someone who loves packing up my schedule. And last week I had such a big week. And I remember saying to myself the week before, it's going to be over. And you dreamed of weeks like this. Exactly. So just enjoy it. Enjoy and when it. I did, it was so much, but I wasn't there stressed. And everything go. went well because I was, I was happy. Yeah. And you even said it today, yeah. right? Like you're so much happier now. Exactly. Like there's no limits. There's no rules. Mm-hmm. There's no rules in this game. Mm-hmm. It's just you. Be yourself. Lev- invest in yourself. Next, yeah. The next episode is going to be hopefully in your own podcast room. Mm-hmm. Like just keep going and just have fun. Be creative. Make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Give back more. Give back more. It's not about money. They ever think you're too big for your boots. No one's too big. We're so all true. humble. All the same. The reason why our energy was so natural, mutual, because we met before. We had different experience, but look at us now. Yeah, it's true. And then hopefully in a year's time, look where we're going to be. Exactly. You know, and that's it. And I wish you the best. And Thank you. Like, Thank let's you let's go. Like, right? you lot let's support, go. subscribe. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, do the whole shambles. Spam the comment. Be like, why is this guy wearing a belly? <laughs> let's all have fun in it. Yeah. Pick up everyone. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you a lot. Thank you. Everyone. And thank you so much for listening and watching this podcast. Wherever you're listening or watching, if you could please press the follow, like and subscribe button, it would really mean the world to me.